percutaneous cannulated screw fixation, pinning, of slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Be aware of the anteroposterior and lateral fluoroscopic views. Technique. The ideal position of a single cannulated screw is in the center of the epiphysis, perpendicular to the physis. In this position, stabilization of the epiphysis to the neck is maximal and the risk is lowest for inadvertent penetration of the screw into the joint. Because of the typical posterior displacement of the femoral epiphysis on the neck, the guide wire and screw must be located on the anterior base of the femoral neck in most cases. The exact location varies with the severity of the slip. Technique. The patient is positioned on the fracture table with the patella facing anteriorly and the limb in neutral to slight abduction. In the case of unstable slips, the epiphysis will usually be noted to have reduced to some extent in this position. No further efforts at reduction should be made. The opposite limb can be placed in traction and maximum abduction or flexed and abducted to clear it from the lateral fluoroscopic projection. Proper functioning of the fluoroscope with adequate anteroposterior, AP, and lateral visualization of the femoral epiphysis should be confirmed at this time. The C-arm fluoroscope is then draped out of the surgical field technique. The ideal trajectory is identified and marked on the patient's skin by placing a free guide wire against the skin while assessing the position of the guide wire under fluoroscopy on both the AP and lateral projections. The intersection of these two lines indicates the proper point of insertion of the guide wire into the patient's limb. A stab incision in the skin is made at this point. Technique. Under fluoroscopic guidance, and following the trajectories marked on the patient's skin, the guide wire is pushed onto the base of the femoral neck, then advanced into the neck, across the physis, and into the epiphysis. If the location of the guide wire is not ideal, it should be repositioned, or temporarily left in place as a guide for the insertion of a second guide wire in the proper position. Great care must be exercised that the guide wire, and subsequently the drill, tap, and screw, is not advanced into the hip joint. For unstable slips, a second guide wire is inserted parallel to the first, preferably into the inferior medial quadrant of the epiphysis. This provides some rotational stability in the case of unstable slips and can be used for the insertion of a second cannulated screw if desired. Technique. The length of the guide wire inserted into the bone is measured either with the cannulated depth gauge instrument, A, or by placing a second guide wire against the femoral neck parallel to that in the femur and measuring the difference of exposed ends of the guide wire. The femoral neck and epiphysis are then drilled and tapped using the cannulated instruments. The cannulated drill is advanced over the guide wire, B, and the screw is inserted over the guide wire. The position of the guide wire is checked periodically to make sure it is not being inadvertently advanced into the hip or withdrawn from the femur with the drill or tap. Technique. A screw of proper length is inserted across the physis into the epiphysis. We prefer to have threads cross the physis, and we do not try to achieve compression between the femoral cortex and the threads of the screw. The screw head should not be left protruding through the femoral cortex more than a few millimeters or it may irritate the soft tissues and cause symptoms. In the case of unstable slips, a second screw may be inserted. The guide wire is withdrawn. Careful assessment should be made before closing the skin to ensure that the screw does not penetrate the joint. The incision can be closed with one or two absorbable subcutaneous and skin sutures. Postoperative management. The patient is taught to use crutches as soon as comfortable. We allow patients with stable slips to bear weight as tolerated, and those with unstable slips to bear partial weight for six weeks. The patient is subsequently periodically re-examined with radiographs to confirm physial closure and to monitor the contralateral hip until skeletal maturity. The technique according to the Stern Stephen H. et al. Key techniques in orthopedic surgery. 2018. If utilizing a fracture table, only the anterolateral aspect of the proximal femur, from groin to mid high, requires sterile preparation. Drape with a shower curtain drape. If utilizing a flat table, the entire lower extremity should be prepped and draped free to allow for frog lateral radiographs. Stern Stephen H. et al., Key Techniques in Orthopedic Surgery. 2018. Lay a guide wire over the anterior thigh. 
Use the image intensifier in an AP view to position the pin so it crosses the physis perpendicularly, aiming toward the center of the epiphysis. Mark its trajectory with a skin marker. Place a guide wire over the surface of the lateral thigh. Again, using an image intensifier and position the pin so that it crosses the physis perpendicularly, aiming toward the center of the epiphysis in the lateral view. Mark the pin trajectory with a skin marker. The intersection of these lines roughly marks the guide wire starting point, figure. Lay a guide wire over the anterior thigh. Use the image intensifier in an AP view to position the pin so it crosses the physis perpendicularly, aiming toward the center of the epiphysis. Mark its trajectory with a skin marker. Figure. Place a guide wire over the surface of the lateral thigh. Again, using an image intensifier and position the pin so that it crosses the physis perpendicularly, aiming toward the center of the epiphysis in the lateral view. Mark the pin trajectory with a skin marker. Figure. The intersection of these lines roughly marks the guide wire starting point. Figure. Under fluoroscopic guidance, advance the guide wire to the level of the physis. Recheck the position of the guide wire in both planes. After achieving and confirming adequate guide wire position, advance the guide wire to within 5 mm of subchondral bone. Use the depth gauge to determine the length of the required implant. Use the cannulated drill to overdrill the lateral cortex only. Insert a single cannulated, fully threaded screw over the pin, and remove the guide wire, figure. The intersection of these lines roughly marks the guide wire starting point, figure. Make a 1 to 2 cm longitudinal incision at the intersection of these two lines. Alternatively, the guide wire may be placed percutaneously, and the incision can be made around the pin once the pin is in the appropriate position to allow for drilling and screw placement. Once the incision is made, dissect the soft tissue bluntly using a hemostat until the anterolateral aspect of the proximal femur is reached. Use fluoroscopic guidance in both the AP and lateral positions to confirm starting point and guide wire trajectory, figure. Take the hip through a complete arc of rotation, internal and external, under live fluoroscopy in both the AP and lateral views to ensure the implant does not violate the joint space, approach withdrawal technique see video. Wound closure per surgeon preference. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.